All right, guys, Sergio Cooper here back again today. Plenty of stuff to discuss that happened last night. I'm making this in the morning, as probably some of you guys can tell, because I'm busy this evening. So today we're going to be discussing things related to the substitutes for the upcoming season and also a link that came out with Modern Warfare just around the corner of the game modes we're going to have. Before we get into that, I wanted to discuss very briefly more about this Seattle roster from yesterday. Probably things that I didn't say in yesterday's video that I was going to and also some things related to the formal and crimson situation we'll go on to that in just a second like if you guys enjoy subscribe if you are new as always i would greatly appreciate it so what i really didn't quite get into yesterday was comparing that seattle lineup apathy karma slack octane and enable which has since been confirmed as i talked about in yesterday's video to the rest of the teams that we have here and um yeah i did talk about quite to some degree seattle versus you know the comparison right to the atlanta team and maybe I didn't quite get into depth as to how many stacked teams there potentially are here, right? There's a lot of very scary teams. And you look at this team on the surface, and when I first saw this, I was like, damn, very solid players. Like, this team should be, like, top four, right? But then when you really look through some of the other rosters, like... It's difficult to to say that these guys are that far above average. I think they can be above average team, as I talked about. There's so much experience here. I didn't really get into the idea that they're like... um Especially when you look at slower, boots on the ground pace games, these guys are have been phenomenal throughout those titles, right? So there's definitely some good, great potential here. But I feel like, okay, you look at a team like Los Angeles, Dashy, TJ, Slasher, Kenny, J Cap, like even a squad like London, I feel like Dallas can be very scary a couple of months in. You've got Chicago, you've got the potential of this Atlanta team, which is a bit strange. New York, I think, is also a very well rounded squad, which is maybe not getting as much attention as it deserves. So, yeah, when you look at the entire picture, I think these guys can be a good team, but um, I'm not going to say they're going to be immediate champions championship contenders especially because they have a couple of players that maybe don't start off too well at the start of the season um, and a lot of people were also talking about why exactly Octane is here and I think this is a good question and I think it may be related to the salary situation we heard um, Crimsix talking about how um, him and Karma couldn't team together because the salary cap would have been too high as far as I'm aware the salary cap is something like one and a quarter million for uh, for the entire year for the entire roster which means that if you have a couple of subs substitutes and you're paying them 50k or something then the salaries on the rest of your team have to be relatively lower than what they could be right and maybe octane got offered 150k to go and join los angeles optic because of the, you know the salaries of these guys are super high or he got offered um, 250k to go and play on this seattle team uh, and maybe that is a no-brainer for him i also wanted to talk about this formal clip that came out on stream a couple of days ago we know we talked about um you know crim six not trusting Gump and Dashy and some of the old Optic guys, the whole di difficult practice situation they had. And then when asked uh, whether he teamed with Formal again, he said, who? And this is Formal's reaction. Crimsix was also pro, but in his relationship with Formal, would you have teamed with Formal? Question mark. To which he simply responded with who? Question mark. Who? That's disrespectful, man. Ungrateful motherfucker. Now, I don't know to what degree Formal's just joking around. I'm sure Formal kind of knows that it's a bit of lighthearted banter, but uh, just the way he says it seems like he's genuinely uh, not exactly best pleased with this. And, uh, well, as I say, it probably creates hell of a good rivalry next season between Chicago and Dallas that you can see on the picture right here. Wanted to go through this as well. Yesterday, Call of Duty announced that they had partnered with Adidas and Pasha T to create this, like, um, well, basically a shoe, which is pretty damn cool. Uh, didn't want to dwell on it too long, but you can now buy a Call of Duty shoe if you would like. Um, I don't know why you would, but who knows? The Kingslayer as we go, I suppose, could be, uh, could be a way forward. As a lot of people were talking about yesterday, the game, I believe, for those who have a disc copy, is now available to play. People have been going through the menus, finding a lot of stuff. It's a thing that came up on Reddit showing that there is an option to enable enemy fire on the minimap. Probably going to be disabled in public matches, but uh, probably will be enabled in competitive play because it's been talked about before how that's what they plan to do for this upcoming season. Now, let's go on to this real quick from Blast. He confirms he's on a pro team, but not as a starter. Take a listen to this clip. Hey. I'm on a pro oh, team, uh, yes. <laughs> but I'm not a starter. So technically I'm an amateur, but like, technically I'm a pro, technically I'm an amateur, like, 
Both and both. So the question is, where will this guy be? There's been talk of him being related to the Los Angeles, the non-optic one. So um, Eggs, uh, Decimate, Saints, Aqua, and Lacefield or Blast, I think was sort of the rumor. So maybe it ended up being Lacefield and not Blast in light of this, uh, in light of this new information. And uh, you know, would that particularly surprise you? Maybe not. So yeah, I think that makes a fair bit of sense. So let's just crack onwards with this here. They also talked about um, you know, Optic Gaming said they'll be in West Hollywood on October 24th for the launch of Modern Warfare. Core Gamepedia did a nice insightful tweet here saying, looks like they could be revealing their roster on the 24th. And what do you know? They do a tweet yesterday, October the 24th, OG LA. They're going to be revealing all the stuff on the same day as Toronto. And October 24th is very soon, keep in mind. That is tomorrow from when this video is going live. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of stuff to discuss on Thursday and going forwards from that as well. So let's move on here to this discussion related to the hard point and the capture the flag situation in this game. This is, we got an image leaked yesterday. I don't want to share any of it because I'm very concerned whenever you share gameplay or any footage of a game before launch, Activision can, you know, absolutely strike your channel. There was this Italian streamer yesterday who was just streaming Modern Warfare that had it live. He's playing a map, I, I think maybe it could have been called Piccadilly or something like that. Um, it was, you know, based in London for sure and it seemed to be a pretty well designed map to, to some degree and I was looking forward to seeing how that would play out I was watching it for a little bit and then uh, then his channel just got striked and taken straight down which just is what you expect to happen right now and even images and stuff posting it you've got to be very careful before launch but uh, this is extracted from that image and these are the game modes that are currently available at the start of the game only seven of them, which is really um, remarkable, given all the customization we have with the weapons and all of this stuff, and the amount of weapons and the amount of uh, attachments and all of these things. You'd have thought there'd have been more game modes than just seven at launch. We've got TDM, of course, a classic. Cyber Attack is like this strange search and destroy variant where you can revive teammates, kind of like Search and Rescue from Ghosts. Remember in Search and Rescue, it was the uh, the same developers, right? Infinity Ward. They didn't even put Search and Destroy in at launch. They put Search and Rescue given instead which is this um in that game you could pick up dog tags like in kill confirmed to revive your teammates in this cyber attack mode you have to kind of like run over where your teammates died and manually revive them in my opinion a very stupid mode because you can be in like a 1v2 have a decent chance of winning it but the other two guys just run around reviving teammates and now you're in a 1v5 or maybe you can revive one and you're in a 2v5 like it's just not gonna work is it? it's just ridiculous domination is in the game of course a classic search and destroy they have managed to put in then we've got headquarters, free for all, and gunfight. We know that gunfight is like that 2v2 mode. So, I mean, the standard modes, there's not very many at all. Free for all and TDM are classics you can't get away from. Same from domination. And as for potential competitive modes here, we've got search and destroy, obviously, will be in. And then is headquarters going to be considered? That's the big question right now. Hardpoint is not in the game at launch, neither is Capture the Flag. And, you know, these modes were talked about for potentially being in competitive play. Now look, whether they will introduce these a couple of months down the line, who knows? I tend to think that when the game launches, there's so many other things on the mind of the developers, it's going to take at least a couple of months to get these kind of things added. So now's October, let's say they add Hardpoint in December, let's say early December and be, um, be optimistic I think, if they add it any earlier than that I'll be impressed to be honest. Let's say early December, they add Hardpoint. Now, who knows exactly when the competitive season is going to start? Let's say it's January. Let's say it's February, one of the two. This reduces valuable time for them to not only learn the Hardpoint rotations and the spawns for the players, but also to tweak the spawns because at the start of the year with Hardpoint, we always have issues with how the spawns work. Last time in Infinite Warfare, Infinity War did a fantastic job in fixing the spawns towards the end of the year. I thought that, that was was one of the best um, you know, hardpoint games of all time, probably all the way back since Black Ops 2. It was probably the best it's ever been done was Infinite Warfare towards the end of the season, but at the start there were certainly some issues. So they're reducing valuable time to tweak those things if hardpoint is even going to be launched for competitive play. And, you know, will it be? Who knows? There's is a very decent argument to say that we're going to be playing Domination, Search and Destroy and Headquarters here. Back in the um, Ghost days, we played Domination, Search and Destroy and Blitz. Who knows where the Headquarters is going to come in instead of Hardpoint? 
Yesterday I was looking through all of the game modes that have been played in Call of Duty history. You've got the likes of Sabotage and back in COD 4. Modern Warfare 2, they played Demolition. Um, CTF is always a classic, but Headquarters has never been played ever in competitive play. I'm pretty sure, even going back all the way. So I'd be really intrigued to hear your thoughts on this down below. Will these three game modes be the ones we're playing for competitive this year? Will they add Hardpoint or CTF soon enough to the game where it's still viable? Because if it takes them a long time to add these to the game, then what are the pros going to be playing and practicing? And are you really going to force them to, um, to you know, not no longer practice headquarters and Dom when they've been probably playing online tournaments and stuff with these respawn modes in? Then let's say it's January time, you add in Hardpoint and you're like, okay, now you're allowed to play in Hardpoint. To be honest, the pros would probably prefer that because this has been an absolutely staple competitive mode, in my opinion, and has been, in my opinion, the best competitive mode ever. Search and Destroy is great, but when you compare Call of Duty to other esports, Search and Destroy, it's not um, it's not as advanced as something like a CSGO. Hardpoint, I think, is the game mode that really separates Call of Duty from other esports. It's fast-paced, but yet it's still controlled, and it makes sense, and it's good for viewers, and it's very intense towards the end, and there's constant action and there's calm before the storm as teams are rotating and getting their setups ready fantastic game mode overall ticks all the boxes for me and it really is a great combo to search and destroy headquarters i'm not sure gives the same degree of um of excitement and the same degree of competitive ability but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, of course. So yeah, moving onwards before we finish the video, then substitute rumours from CDL yesterday. Like I said yesterday, uh, this won't be anywhere near as accurate as the starting rosters. This is what I've heard, though. So um, a nice little image here. So yeah, Atlanta, Journey, Gravity, and maybe more. Dallas Empire, Mutex is talked about. London Ravens, Shawnee, and Madcap, potentially. So, you know, don't keep in mind that these are things that are, they could be all over the place, right? Minnesota, T-Tiny and Exceed. Blast we just talked about related to this LA Gorillas team. Uh, Parasite as well to keep in mind. Seattle, maybe Panda is an interesting point. We know that the subliners have picked up Sensor as their sub. And then Toronto, we have a huge um, starting roster. So, you know, probably uh, Methods and Looney will be on the main team. So it just depends. Classic Bounce, Cami, Kleenex and Mayhem. We've also got the likes of Lucky uh, and uh, Metals linked to this team. But maybe they'll be on the starting roster. And Paris, we do have a seven-man team, but of course it just depends who starts. And it'll be interesting to see these announcements, because most of the main teams, we already have the announcements done and dusted and sorted and we know what's happening. So it'll be interesting to see how the substitutes develop. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And, uh, well, I'll see you next time.